Our lesson of scripture this morning uh, comes to us from Psalm number 62. Here now the reading of God's holy word. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall never be shaken. How long will you assail a person? Will you batter your victim, all of you, as you would a leaning wall, a tottering fence? Their only plan is to bring down a person of prominence. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. For God alone, my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor. My mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In the world that the psalmist lived in, a long time ago, he said, only in God do I find rest. Only God is my rock and my salvation. The psalmist said it not once, but twice. He um, could have said it three times because in his generation, in our generation, in any generation, uh, it is true. Uh, the image of the rock, it's a powerful image. Uh, a rock is solid. Sometimes we find a rock in a high place, and sometimes we find a rock in a low place, but always um, when we find a rock, it is a solid place. A rock is a safe place. It offers protection. Uh, a cave made out of rock is a place of refuge in a storm. Moses went up on Mount Sinai to uh, meet God. God appeared, and Moses said to him, um, God, you know, if I'm going to go back down there and kind of tell everybody who you are and, and explain what it is you want us to do, um, I need to know a little bit more so I can share with them. Uh, could you, as a favor to me, God, show me your glory? And um, God says, Moses, you have no idea what you're asking to be unprotected in the presence of my glory is pretty much to be vaporized. And I picked you to help me deliver my people. And if I vaporize you by letting you look straight on at me, you're not going to be able to help me. Tell you what I'll do. There's a cave right over there. I'm going to tell you to go over and step inside the entrance to that cave. And there's a place in the cleft of the rock. And, and you turn your back. And when I pass by, as I pass by, you can glance and see me as I disappear. And that's about as good as I can do for you. Um, Fanny Crosby, she wrote one of our favorite hymns about that very passage of Scripture. Uh, he hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock. And I know that he cares for me. A lot of our music, uh, all through the centuries, uh, picks up the image of the rock. Um, contemporary Christian music, no exception. Uh, you can go to a contemporary service, and um, they have the praise band up, and while they're, no pun intended, rocking out, um, chances are, on any given Sunday, at least one of the pieces they sing will have some verses in it about God as our rock. Um, what are the advantages of thinking of God as a rock? Well, let's start by thinking about um, what the absence of a rock means. Sometimes uh, the absence of rock results in a landslide. Um, what's a landslide? A landslide is a collapse of a hill 
when there is no rock to anchor the land. The only other thing is the cover of tree and tree roots. And um, if fire or flood destroys the tree cover and there is no, no rock shelf underneath, then the land, the hillside will give way. More and more common is to turn on the TV and, and see a story about a place where flooding has passed by um, following forest fires and huge hillsides giving way. And very often, if they're near neighborhoods with a great loss um, of life, that's what the absence of a rock can result in. A rock then is a place where there is safety and security. We don't need to worry about a landslide or, or the earth giving way under your feet. There is a long list of words which we find in the Bible uh, to describe God. I can't remember the last time um, I, I googled that list. I think that there were about 95 names used for God in the Old Testament. Rock is on the very short list of, of words that is prominent in using to describe our God. So where am I going with all of this? Um, we tend to see God in different uh, modes, at different moments in our lives, depending on whatever need it is that we take to God. Um, we, we have a need in a particular area, and, and we go approach that part of God for relief. Uh, and when I say God, I mean Christ as well. In the face of a beautiful sunrise or a beautiful sunset, uh, we tend to just sort of think of God as creator and, and we relate to him as the one who made it all. And there's, there's nothing but praise in that. Uh, in a tight place, we turn to God as a deliverer to deliver us from whatever it is that's hemming us in. In a lonely place in life, we turn to God as a friend to befriend us. Um, having done something uh, that we really regret, as in having sinned, uh, we turn to a merciful God to forgive us. Uh, having been wronged, in, in a hurtful way um, by someone, we may, um, in a more selfish moment, turn to a God of judgment to give us a little justice and satisfaction uh, to, to help us get through that hurtful situation. Uh, God is all of these things, but God is also a presence like um, a, a, a great rock, a, um, a silent, giant sentinel uh, saying nothing but, but just by being. It makes a statement. Now, <clears throat> We know that, but we don't always do very much with it. This is not, as the sermon title says, National Real Estate Sunday. There is no such thing. There is National Real Estate Week. I just declared today National Real Estate Sunday uh, for purposes of my sermon. Uh, six and a half years ago, we moved up to Haywood County for retirement. Over on Highway 209, the first week I was here, uh, the 
runs up between Lake Junaluska and Hot Springs, just before you get to I-40, um, I found a piece of property that was for sale. Um, um, there's a whole hillside for sale, and in the middle of it, there, there's this really big rock. Um, down on the road, there was a sign with, of course, for sale at the top, and then at the bottom there was a phone number. And then uh, in the middle, the offering was this. Uh, this rock and all the land around it. Uh, that's a, an unusual way to market mountain land, but it certainly got my attention. Uh, and I got to thinking about it, and it really spoke a great biblical truth to me. Uh, the rock is at the center. Well, that's Christ. Uh, the rock anchors everything around it. Well, Christ is an anchor in life. The rock is, is the stabilizing presence in that hillside. In an unstable world, Christ is, is the stabilizing presence in our lives. Guess what? The sign is still there. <laughs> Drove by it last week. Um, the land is still for sale, and most important, the rock is still in place. Hadn't moved an inch. Now you've heard the story. I told it four years ago, um, and everything that I said then about God being a rock is still true. Um, I pulled the car over. Traffic runs pretty fast on 209, so I went up and turned around and came back down and parked on the side of the road, got out of the car, and walked over to take a closer look at the sign. The paint's fading. Um, the lettering is kind of getting a little bit harder to read. Um, the weeds are really high. You can't even see the phone number anymore. Um, there's another note that's been added onto the sign, and that is that the price has come down. Um, but, but they also put another little notation. But that even though the price has gone down, the rock is still included. <laughs> um, that, that struck me this week. Um, the rock is still available. Uh, people pass by. People may look at the sign or may not. They may take note of the hillside. Uh, they may take note of the rock. Um, they may even admire it. And so, you know, that might be a nice place to live. But everybody moves on. Uh, take note, but not take advantage. It looks to me like the perfect piece of property. Uh, view the mountains. Let's lower your eyesight a little bit. And the Pigeon River is right across um, the road. You've got this high hillside. Um, and you've got this great site for building and there's no way the hillside's going to give way because the rock is, is really big and it is an anchor um, anything short um, of the days of Noah returning <laughs> it, it will withstand and yet it's still for sale um, That unclaimed rock is sort of uh, my reminder of the rock that God is in a different kind of way in our lives. Um, a rock for us to stand on, a rock for us to lean against, um, a rock for us to depend on, for us to trust in, and, and a place to find really the only truly solid footing that there is in life. You 
knew that. <laughs> so this is the place where the preacher says, oh, we need to do something about that. Uh, to not just take note of, to admire of uh, that aspect of God that is our rock and our salvation. But to stand on that rock, to lean on that rock, to depend on that rock, to put our faith in Christ and God who are our rock and our salvation. Because God isn't a rock for nothing. He's a rock for something. And that is to make our lives better and show us the way uh, as pilgrims in this land uh, to live fruitful lives here and to make our way to our eternal home. Joyce, if you'll come and um, play our last hymn for us, um, I invite you if you sing this hymn to take with you the God who is your rock and your salvation um, and let him make the difference in your life in the way that God would like to make a difference in your life and my life.